Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Dex Lab Analytics. My name is Niharika Rai and this is part 2 of Analysis of Variance. Well, I'll be talking about two-way ANOVA. If you haven't watched my previous video, please click on the I button on the top right hand side corner of your screen. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So in one-way ANOVA in our previous video, we discussed how different varieties different varieties of seed like A, B and C can be checked to see if these different variety of seed have different productivity or not. So we have three samples here and we want to check that whether these samples uh, differentiate from each other are different from each other in terms of productivity or not so we had only one factor that is a b and c that is variety of seed variety of seed now when i say when i talk about two way anova we compare the samples on the basis of two factors in our case we'll be taking it as a, B and C that is your variety of seeds and W, X, Y and Z that is variety of variety of fertilizers. So we want to check that if we draw a random sample and we collect three samples like so A and B and C and we also check that that if a single fertilizer like this is applied on uh, this particular seed is it different from the is is the productivity different from this this or this so we want to check the fertilizer either the fertilizer are affecting the productivity or the um, seed variety or both. So now let's discuss about the steps involved in calculation of or testing of ANOVA, two-way ANOVA in particular. The first step in calculation of ANOVA and comparing the samples is that we take the total of all the observations that is suppose that we have a sample A, B and C um, with W, X, Y and Z we'll take the total of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and so on and so forth and then you'll have your summation of X, I, J here. After that, what we are going to do is, there is something uh, called correction factor. We will calculate the correction factor by simply squaring these values, the t values and dividing it by the number of observations which we have. Now the third step is to find out the squares of all the observations by one by one and then take the total and subtract. So suppose that we have 23. 34, 35. So for what we need to do is, what we need to do is we need to square these values first. So 23 into 23 and then ultimately when, when we have done that, 34 into 34 and so on and so forth. Once we have the addition of all that, we need to subtract this value from the correction factor. So basically here what we are doing is we are taking the we are trying to calculate the difference between the entire total value squared and then averaged and the difference between each value when squared and uh, we have the summation that's that. So we have total SS here. Now there is something called between column treatment between column treatments is calculated by uh, taking the values of each column that is 23, 25, 26, 27 or whatever the value may be taking a summation squaring those values 
dividing it by n and we'll be doing that for all the columns so here suppose that the uh, the the value is 105 or something like that so we'll multiply or square these values add it with all the other columns by doing the same thing divide it by n in each case and then we'll subtract this from the correction factor so that we get how much the how much there is a column difference and that's that next in line is that we need we also need to calculate the uh, between uh, rows treatment that is taking out the differences between rows that means we have to suppose that the rows are 23 25 29 we need to do a summation of these square these values and then average it out depending upon the number of um, rows which we have in this case so after that what we are going to do is we are going to do it for the all the rows in this manner and then we are going to subtract it by the correction factor we'll be doing a practical example so that you understand this entire thing more clearly but for right now just you can just go ahead and pause this video and write down all the steps so that in uh, late uh, later on in the video you'll be able to calculate it simultaneously and understand what it means now next in line is something called correction uh, something called residual error we need to also calculate the residual error and for res calculation of residual error we we have we have already calculated the total ss subtract this total ss from the summation of total column treatment that is bit sorry between column treatment plus between row treatment now once all that is done we ha we will have to calculate the mean square between column treatment between row treatment and residual so let's check how to calculate that so for calculating mean square between column treatment all you need to do is calculate ss between uh, we have ss uh, divide ss between by the degree of freedom that is c minus 1 so whatever ss between you have calculated that is whatever the between column treatment you have calculated uh, you need to divide it by c minus 1 that is the degree of freedom and same case goes for between row treatment ms between row treatment and in this case you'll use ss between row divided by r minus 1 and same will uh, same goes for ms residual error whatever residual we have calculated from the formula uh, that is total ss minus between column treatment plus between column uh, between row treatment whatever the result is divided by c minus 1 multiplied by r minus 1 now when i say c minus 1 r minus 1 what does that mean now so in this case c minus 1 is the the degree of freedom for where c is column minus 1 that is between uh, between column degree of freedom r minus 1 is between row degree of freedom where r is row and c minus 1 multiplied by r minus 1 is the residual error degree of freedom last step is to calculate the f ratio for both columns and rows separately now if you haven't understood what i just said you can go ahead and do not break the break the continuation of the video and let's solve this particular problem along with the steps we just studied so as i said the first step is to calculate or take out the sum of all the observations so when I say sum of all the observations, I mean to say that 6, we need to calculate 6 plus 7 plus 3 plus 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 and so on and so forth. So all, the sum total of all the observations in our case will be 60. So once we have done that, next is to calculate the correction factor so for calculation of correction factor 60 multiplied by 
60 divided by total number of observation so we have 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so that the end result will be 300 in our case so what till now we have only calculated the correction factor that is squaring the just adding up all the values and using its square form and averaging it so that each value is overall the data is squared and we get an average of that so since we are calculating it on the basis of squares we will be calculating we will be calculating all the values in terms of squares in this case so 2 and over works like that so we have next in line we have the total ss calculation so xij which is nothing but 6 multiplied by 6 plus we have 5 multiplied by 5 that is 5 square and so on and so forth. So we have what we need to do is we need to square each and every value 1 by 1 and we have to take a summation of all that. Once we have taken the summation, we need to subtract that value from the cor correction factor we have just calculated so that we get the, the difference between the um, correction factor and the value squared. Okay, so here that is why it is called total SS, total sum of squares. Technically, we are taking out the variation between the summation square and each value squared. In sum it and then we have uh, done a sum on it so once that is done what we are going to do is we are going to calculate SS between column treatment so for SS between column treatment that is comparing each column with one another what we are going to do is we are going to use this these values in each column 6 7 3 and 8 and we are going to add it so we have 6 7 3 8 24 for b we'll do likewise and for c we'll be doing the same so we have 24 20 16 once we have that these additions we are going to do on we are going to square these values and divided by 4 since we have done the same for the entire cal uh, for the entire observation cells okay so we will uh, add these values we will be doing a summation of all those and then we will be subtracting that value from 300 so what we are doing is does it does my um, column um, does my each column represent my entire data squared or not is there a difference between that or not in case we have a difference so we will get a value in case no then the result will be 0 so here we have 8 so we are saying we are saying that each sample do does each sample if if squared and taken out the average deviate or it has a difference from the um, summation of all the data squared or not so that's that now we have ss between row treatment this is the value that is 8 for ss between column treatment and next we have ss between row treatment we are going to do the same thing as we did before we are going to calculate 6 plus 5 we are going to do a summation of 6 plus 5 plus 5. So we get 16 for W. For X, we got 7 plus 7, uh, 5 plus 4, that is 16 again. For Y, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3, that is 9. And for Z, we have 8 plus 7 plus 4, that is 19. Again, what we are going to do is we are going to square the each value and we are going to average it. 
since we have again we have the original data the correction factor in the squared format and we are comparing it with the squared formats and and that is why we have squared values here as well to compare once we have that we will subtract that value from 300 that is the correction factor and we have the residual as 18 and here we have the residual as 8 next what we need to do is we need to calculate the residual error that is the total ss minus the the between column treatment plus the the between row treatment okay once we calculate that we have a value of 6 here now we need to calculate ms between column so for ms between column we have 8 as our between row between column treatment divided by 3 minus 1 that is c minus 1 we had three columns that is a b and c so out of that we are, uh, so the degree of freedom is 3 minus 1 so the result is 4 now ms between row is 18 minus 18 divided by 4 minus 1. 4 are the number of rows. That is W, X, Y and Z. 4 minus 1 is 3. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. So we have MS between row. Now we need to calculate MS residual. Since the residual was 6 here, we have 6 divided by C minus 1 multiplied by R minus 1. So at the end, we get a result of 1, that is 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 2s are 6, 6 upon 6 is 1. So we have that and then all we need to do is calculate the F ratio. Now what is F ratio? How we calculate that is by dividing the, so for between column treatment, divide the MS between, that is 4, by the MS residual error, that is 1 we get 4 and same will be for ms between row uh, f ratio for between row treatment so 6 ms between row is 6 6 divided by ms residual error 1 equals to 1 now all we need to do is calculate after this we are done we have calculated the f ratios if you notice the f ratio if if we if we write down the formula here Suppose that, let me just change the pen color. So if we change, if we, if we write the formula of F ratio in this regards, that is MS between, between column upon MS, MS residual, dual error. Okay. And what is MS residual? It is the difference between the overall, um, total SS that is the difference between uh, the correction factor and the squared form of your data individually and the summation of squared form of your data and the differences between row and column in a summation form. So ultimately we have vari variance here. Okay and what is MS between column? It is nothing but the difference between each column the difference uh, between each column with from the correction factor again we have the variance in that regards so in general hypothesis testing has the uh, hypothesis testing has the formula of f ratio as this and this are quite similar in this regards the only difference is here we are calculating on multiple factors multiple factors are involved that is two in this case and we have multiple samples as well that is more than more than two so hypothesis testing is done for uh, minimum one and maximum two samples uh, sample comparisons and uh, when it comes to ANOVA we can compare as many samples as we want but it should be maximum uh, minimum three samples okay so once we have done that now we have critical value critical value to be calculated so critical value is calculated by simply writing f 
C minus 1 for MS uh, MS between column for the columns comma we have the residual error that is C minus a uh, degree of freedom of residual that is R minus 1 so it is C number of columns are 3 3 minus 1 is 2 comma this value was 6 so ultimately to find out the value of um, the critical to find out the critical value we need 2 comma 6 and in the table go ahead and check out uh, in the F distribution table a 5% level of significance go ahead and check out the values which will come out to be 5.14 in between column treatment and for between row treatment we have R minus 1 comma C minus 1 R minus 1 so the values are 4 minus 1 that is 3 comma 6 for 3 comma 6 the critical value is 4.76 now once compared once we compare these between column values we see that and between row column values we see that ms between column falls within the critical value whereas ms between rows ms between row falls outside the critical value so in this case in this case we can say that is between column treatment that is the variety of seed we can say that due to variety of seed the productivity productivity does not get affected whereas due to fertilizers since the uh, since the value of ms between row lies outside the critical value we can say that the productivity is affected by the variety of fertilizers and then you can go ahead and draw your graphs to check for the same so this is for um, ms between columns for the variety of seeds 5.14 5.14 this is the rejection region if you haven't watched my hypothesis testing video you can go ahead and watch that because i have clearly explained what this graph means and um, what these value means and this is the rejection region if you may recall and this is the acceptance region and since the value 4 lies within the acceptance region we say that there is no difference between um, sam between uh, samples to sample when it comes to variety of seed and for the same thing we can draw a graph um, we can draw a graph like this for uh, for between row 4.76 minus 4.76 4.76 in plus rejection region again acceptance region again and since since 6 lies beyond this value it comes under rejection region so we can say that um, the, there is a call there is a row difference that is fertilizers affect the productivity of your um, say wheat or produce in that sense yeah so in general what we are doing is we are first calculating all the values we are first calculating the um, the correction factor that is the square the total of each value then squared and we are subtracting it from the individual square summation of individual squares so that we get the difference between the individual summation of individual squared values and the total uh, summation of uh, these values squared and so that we get a residual error right after that what we do is we calculate the difference between each column by, uh, by we calculate the variation between uh, these columns and the entire data squared that is the correction factor after that we also calculate the uh, the variation between variation between the rows and the entire data uh, squared 
the, then we calculate the mean squared values that is the in case there uh, there is a uh, there is a difference or the values are uh, have a co uh, an outlier the the result may not affect so um, should not affect so we take the degree of freedom in consideration we take that and we also calculate the residual error that is the uh, difference between the total assess that is original difference between the data squared format and the um, uh, individual value squared format and we subtract that value from the summation of the difference which we have calculated between rows and between columns once we have done that we'll just calculate the f ratios on the basis of rows and columns in terms of variations um, and that's it and then we'll go ahead and calculate the critical value find out the critical value from the f distribution table depending upon the significance level and Again, if you haven't watched if you haven't watched my pre hypothesis testing video, please go ahead and watch that. All these um, words which I am using, like uh, significance level, critical value, I've explained them in detail, in depth, in those videos. So yeah. So what we are doing in reality is we are comparing the entire data with columns and with rows, and see, and we are trying to see if uh, if if overall the entire data uh, the the pattern of the entire data changes on the column basis or on the row basis and that's that so that's it for this video um, hope this all uh, blabbering of mine made some sense and you got some information about what is two way ANOVA and why we calculate that um, uh, if you want to learn more from DexLab Analytics or from me, you can go on to the website www.dexlabanalytics.com. You can contact us via these phone numbers in front of your screen. Also, you can WhatsApp us or you can write us a mail on hello at the rate dexlabanalytics.com. We are currently placed in uh, Gurgaon. So, yeah please click uh, click the like button if you like this video please share this video uh, to your friends and family members who are in this um, career in this career path um, yeah bye bye take care have a nice day ahead or a good night's sleep bye bye